Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk about built-in Django template tags and how we can use these to output dynamic content into our pages. So what are template tags? Template tags are a way for us to write Python-like logic right in our template here and also output data. So there are two kinds of template tags we can use. And the first one's gonna be with these two curly braces and two percent signs. And this just lets us write logic like a for loop or a if else statement. And the next one is gonna be this one with double curly braces. And this lets us pass in data through variables and other dynamic ways. So what I'll do for this example is I'll actually call our database and fill out this table here with the products. So we're gonna write a for loop here. So we're gonna do for I in products. And we just need to close out that for loop now. And we can just do end for and before we start actually working with the products, I actually need to pass them to the template. So I'll just open this all the way here and go into our views. And I actually just ran an import for the models because I need to query those. So if you're following along with a series, make sure that's imported. But now we're gonna go to our products page and we're working with these models right here. So the product model. So we'll just do products equals to product dot objects dot all. So that's gonna go ahead and query the database for all the products. And we can pass these into the template by throwing in a dictionary as one more parameter to this render function. So whatever we call it here is what we can call it in the templates. So I'll just go ahead and call it products. And for products, we need to pass in the key as the values that we want here. So we name the key whatever we want, and this can be called uh, just a list or whatever we want it. But whatever we say here, is what we need to call it in the templates. So now in our template, we can actually loop through the product because we have it right here and access each item. So we're gonna do i.name. And in each loop iteration, because we're in a table, I already have my table prepped with these headers right here. So what I wanna do is on each iteration, I actually wanna create a new table row and I'll put that in a table column. So we'll close that off and throw that into a column. Okay, so we have that loop and the data is passed right here. So that's how we're able to access products in our template tag. So now if I refresh that page, we should see all the product names. So we don't have category or price, but we just loop through every single item in that table and I'll put it here. And just to make sure we, everything's working right, here's the admin panel for products, and here we go, ball, dishes, and barbecue grill. So let's go ahead and actually fill in these areas, and we'll access everything like a normal Python object. So we'll just do category and price. So we wanna output those. So in this case, we're referencing these names right here, and price is actually right there, and we'll do category. And there we go. So that's how we're able to use template tags to actually write some loops in Python logic and actually output the data and pass it into the template. So for the rest of the video, I'll actually go ahead and just complete the page. So we'll build out the rest of our dashboard and that's on the home page. So we'll go ahead and just load out customers and the orders and throw in some statistics. So that'll be done through the view right here through the home view. So in the dashboard, let's start by querying all the orders and customers. So we'll just do order.objects.all and we'll do the same for customers. So customers are gonna be equal to customer.objects.all. And let's just go ahead and pass these in. And instead of building this dictionary right here, what I'm gonna do is just create one called context and we'll throw in the orders and the customers here. So throw in orders. And this is what I referenced earlier when I said we can pass in as much as we want. It's just a dictionary and we'll throw in customers. Okay, so now in our home page, we'll close this one out. We can close models page out too. And let's open up our dashboard. So in our dashboard, we'll scroll down to customers right here. So this table, we just want to output everything. 
So let's go ahead and create a new row and a new table. So let's create that loop. Sorry, not a new row and table, but a new row and column. So now in our template tags, we can just do for I in, and I'll actually just call it by its name. So for, um, for customer in customers, and remember it has to be whatever we named it in the dictionary. And let's just close this out with an end for and now we can build out a row. And now let's just pass in all the customer information. So what we want is the customer name and the amount of orders that that customer has placed. Actually, we won't do orders for now, so we'll just find another attribute because that's a model method we have to use for that. And that's something that we need to do in another video so I can actually explain that. So let's just use a phone number. So we'll just do, we'll actually change that. And I, again, jump to the wrong template here. So that's the orders. We need to do this in the customer's template. So we'll do phone and we'll change that to orders later because we actually do want the count. So let's just do customer dot name. And one more column is gonna be customer dot phone. Okay, and that should do it. Something didn't output there. And I forgot one step and that was passing this context into the render method. So let's throw that in and now that should work. So there we go, we have our customers and looks like the table's a little off. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's just fix that. And it looks like I always produce a empty table there or column. So I'll actually just go ahead and remove that. And that should look better. Okay, so we have our customers. Now let's go ahead and output our orders and we'll actually just copy and paste this and use the same method in our table for the orders that we created. And for this, we'll just do order and orders and we'll just change all the names. And for order, we wanted to do date underscore created. I'm just gonna pull up the model names here, attribute names. Then we'll just do status. And for update and remove, I'll just throw in some buttons there, but we do also want to list out the product name. So let's just go ahead and throw that in too, and we'll say product. So if I refresh this, the order should now be output. There we go. And we're just gonna create some buttons for those. So let's just throw in two more columns and we want a button produced on each one. And for now the buttons won't be linked, but they'll later actually link to, uh, to a certain page there. So we'll just do a, a link with an empty href and we'll set that to no value for now. And we'll say update and delete. And we'll just copy and paste that. Okay, so for the last things on this page, so there are our buttons there for now. We just wanna, we wanna put out these orders here or the total orders, orders delivered and orders pending. So to do that, we'll just pass in a few more methods. So let's go to our view. And in our view, let's first, let's first total up the customers. So we can do that by saying, setting a variable and we'll say total underscore customers. And that'll just be this customer's object right here. And we'll just do customers dot count and that'll give us the total. The next one we'll do is total orders. So total underscore orders. And that's gonna be order dot objects dot all. And at this point, because I'm just outputting all the orders, I can actually just reference this and just do dot count. And later on, we'll actually change this to only reference five, the last or the most recent five. So we'll use that and now we can do delivered and that'll just be orders.filter and we just want every order with the status of delivered. So let's change that to capital and now the last one is gonna be orders pending. So I think all of our orders are actually set to pending. So we'll just do pending and change that. So 
for these, we just want to know the count. So we're trying to, we're not trying to return a query set, but we're trying to run a calculation. And I'll just go ahead and throw these in now and put them on their own line. Total orders, pass that in, delivered. And pending. So we'll go one more line down here and throw that in. Okay, so now that we've named all those, what we can do is actually go up here to the stats section and find each one. So actually we didn't do that in dashboard, but we did it in this nav, not nav bar, but status. Okay, so the reason we're able to pass in this information into the status section is because it's inheriting or it's a child of the dashboard template. So in here, let's just throw in the count. So we can use the double curly braces here and we'll just say total underscore orders and we'll just repeat this a few times. So we'll pass those in, throw that into orders delivered. So delivered, can never spell that right. And finally orders pending. Okay, so again, that's in the status template. That's the one we included into our dashboard right here. So if we refresh that, that should work. Looks like we have an error. So I made another dumb mistake and I need to specify what we're filtering by. So this needs to be status equals and I need to continue this. Always miss steps like this when I'm filming. So that should now do it. Okay, perfect. So we have four total orders. All our orders are pending, none delivered. So if I were to change a number here on one of these orders or a stat, um, let's just say delivered, we'll notice it go from the pending to the delivered column and that's all taken care of. So in the next video, we'll actually build out the page for every single product or every single customer. So when you click on a customer, we'll actually be able to view them and that's done dynamically. So that's why I'm holding it for the next video. So we'll cover all that and how to actually use one template to render something like a profile page. So uh, we don't have to make multiple templates for multiple customers. It's all rendered in the same thing.